Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. My name is Josh and today we are looking at my Australian themed carnivorous plant terrarium. Okay everyone, so this is a project that I have been planning for a long time and I finally was able to gather all the plants up and, you know, construct this thing. Um, I constructed it and put it together about um, maybe two or three months ago and since then the plants have grown into their new habitats and um, yeah, it is just absolutely amazing. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at how I constructed this terrarium. And also, I got to change out of plants because one is not very happy back there. So, going to be changing it out for another Australian native carnivore. So this is in a 12 by 12 by 18 inch paludarium. Um, it is all glass. It does have a door. It is made by Zilla and... It's just a really nice terrarium. I always love the paludariums they make. But if we open it up here, you can see that two main features we have is a puddle and the little hillside for the cephalotus to grow off of. So let's first look at some of the plants that are inside this paludarium. So of course, the main feature of this paludarium habitat are the Cephalotus follicularis. These are the Australian carnivorous plants, pitcher plants, and you can see that I have a total of three clumps inside this habitat. We have one big one there at the top. That one took a little bit of a hit after I um, transplanted them because Cephalotus are known to have some um, fragile roots and sensitive, so they could take a hit. Here's another one here, smaller clump, and there's the other one. As for Drosera, I have a bunch of Adelaide in here. Here's a small one here right next to the uh, puddle, that's Drosera Adelaide. There's another one right here, just in the corner, and here's the biggest clump right here. They are just gorgeous. Absolutely love Adelaide. Always grows so well for me and it's so sticky and nice. Love the green coloration on this one. And then the other two sundews. This is Drosera Hamiltonii. One of my top favorite sundews. It is just awesome and a dream plant to have. And the other one, unfortunately, it's not doing well, but that is Drosera, um, it's Falconeri crossed or with Ordinensis. So, two Australians crossed together. I'm not sure if that one naturally occurs in the wild, but I put it in there. It looked nice when I first put it in, but it's not doing too well. I'm going to switch it out for Drosera scorpioides later in this video. And this little guy is Drosera prolifera. Okay, let's talk about the hardscape. So what I have here is a mixture of peat moss, sand, and perlite. And you can see I made this little mound here. Um, I took a lot of inspiration on some posts I've seen on Instagram. I'll show them up on the screen. A lot of cephalotus in the wild grow next to and um, actually get into flooded areas so this is going to be a bit of a challenge because I know cephalotus are quite picky or they can be quite picky with their environment and how much water they get 
but my cephalotus prior to going in this terrarium have been grown just like a sundew in a water tray so I thought why not why not go ahead and give this a shot um, and obviously it's been growing for a few months now each plant have put out new leaves new pictures and all seems to be well if we go down to the substrate layer you can see that there is a drainage layer of LECA and then there's a separation layer. I, I literally just used some clean underwear that I had just to separate the peat moss from the LECA layer and then the peat moss sand perlite mixture. So the water level does actually go up to around here in the entire thing so this entire bottom is flooded. Um, originally in the first design when I built it I had a tray just a round tray the same size as that puddle there to hold the water because I thought this all this excess water in the soil may not do well for the cephalotus but it just did not look very good. So I just changed it out and just said screw it let's try it and they're working out so far. So I just have that dug out there you can see a little stone there. One thing I'd like to um, <clears throat> mention is I do not keep this puddle flooded all the time. I rarely ever have any water in it. Most of the time it's empty and it's not so wet in there. So I guess that could be the, another reason why they are growing so well is because it's not all the time flooded. Most of the cephalotus are suspended above the water line though. The closest one is of course this little guy. And to illuminate up this whole setup I just have one YesCom 225 panel in here. It is the perfect size to fit this um, paludarium. And it's just secured onto the, uh, the wire top on this. All right, I have my Scorpioides. So I'm going to start by removing that guy and then I'm just going to plant it in this pot here where there's room. Alrighty guys, those are looking good. Can't wait for those to grow a little bit, possibly produce some Jimmy and spread around in here. Alrighty everyone, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this setup, please leave them down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Have a good day guys. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to water your plants.